Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Today, I am going to do my absolute best to give you a breakdown of what I think the Packers big board is going to look like when they're selecting at or around pick 29. Maybe they move up a little, maybe they move down a little, but I think we're going to have a fairly good idea as to what players Green Bay is targeting at or around that pick. And you might say, Andy, what the hell? Like Green Bay's big board will be uh, basically guarded like Fort Knox and they will not allow any secrets out. Nobody knows what Brian Gutekunst and the Packers are thinking. And to an extent, that's a million percent true. And these things evolve every year. And even though we have some past tendencies based on what Green Bay likes, they could go completely off script and all of this could be for naught, right? But over the course of the last five to six years, even going back to when Ted Thompson started as GM, Green Bay has been fairly transparent with what type of player they target early in the draft. And that volume has been turned up even a notch since Brian Gutekunst has taken over as uh, general manager for the Packers. So they've basically kind of laid out a blueprint for what type of players they are targeting. And today I'm going to go over that blueprint, what specifically they target, and then what players fit within that range. And I think we can narrow it down pretty close, maybe 10 to 15 players, and then I'll narrow it down to my final three. Now, at this point last year, I did the exact same exercise. I narrowed it down to about nine or 10 players, and I narrowed it down even further right at about this time. I think it was April 16th last year that I did this to about three players that I thought Green Bay would target with their first pick. Those three players that I mentioned last season, Jordan Love, Ezra Cleveland, and Austin Jackson. And the reason that I picked those players were because they target premium picks that are usually low in age and usually are going to be very athletic players. And based on what I expected to be available at that point in the draft, it didn't really make sense for anything almost besides those three players. And Ezra Cleveland was rumored to be a, pa- a player that the Packers really, really liked. Austin Jackson went a couple players prior to Green Bay selecting. And then of course, Jordan Love is who they traded up and selected. Am I bragging about it? Hell yes, I'm bragging about it because it's very difficult to get these picks right every year. Um, I certainly have not. I think the only two I've gotten right have been Jordan Love. And I think prior to that, Dayton Jones. I was pretty close to being on Nick Perry too, if I remember, but these are very difficult to get correct. So Let's kind of go through this exercise and label exactly what Green Bay likes in the draft, and then we'll go through those players one by one. So as I've mentioned before, and as I just mentioned a second ago, that first category is premium position players. 13 of their last 16 first picks in the draft have been either quarterback, offensive tackle, defensive lineman, edge rusher, or corner. They want those premium position players. They're taking home run swings at those positions to try to get long-term fills at the positions that are most impactful in the NFL. Makes sense. Logical sense. So 13 of the last 16. Now I think, I think, I think we're fair to say that Green Bay will not be targeting quarterback in the first round. So we can limit that down to offensive tackle, defensive lineman, edge rusher, and corner. All right. Now here's the next category. Green Bay has very much valued age when they have picked early in the last six drafts or their last six top picks in the draft, I should say, because a couple of them were Gary and Savage, which were in the same draft. But let's look at these. Jordan Love, age 21. Rashawn Gary, age 21. Darnell Savage, age 21. Jair Alexander, age 21. Kevin King, age 21. And then Kenny Clark, age 20. All right, a very clear pattern here of what type of uh, players they're targeting. Premium position players, very, very young and talented. And then last but not least, highly, highly, highly athletic players. Now, you may not be totally familiar with Kent Lee Platy's RAS or RAS score. It's called relative athletic score. And what it's doing is it's taking players at each individual position and it's giving them a score based on their overall athleticism relative to the other players that have been in the combine or have done testing through basically the last like 20 years. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's been a long time now that he's put these together of of draft numbers and, and athletic thresholds and everything like that. And generally, Green Bay is looking for players at their position that are in the 80th percentile or better. And if you just look at what Brian Gutekunst has done, 
In the last three years, we have we have numbers, athletic testing numbers for 25 of the players that he's selected. 22 out of the 25 have had athletic profiles that have been in the 80th percentile or better. Think of that. 22 out of 25 have tested in the 80th percentile or better at their specific positions. This is something that Green Bay values very, very much. The only three that have gone off script of the players that we have testing numbers for, Jay Sternberger, late third round pick, or I guess mid to late third round pick, Cole Madison in the fifth, and Jake Hansen in the sixth. All right. Only one pick in the top 100 that's been outside of that 8.0 RAS score and no picks in the first two rounds. And certainly nobody that's been close to it in the first round or with their first overall pick. They have targeted players in the 80th percentile or better almost every single time under Brian Gutekunst. And it goes back further than that as well. Jason Spriggs, Kevin King, the list goes on. They have targeted highly, highly, highly athletic players. So we are looking for offensive tackles, defensive linemen, edge rushers, and corners who are around the age of 21, maybe give or take a year, who are highly athletic at their position. So let's start with offensive tackle. Who do we have? Sam Cosme, Texas, offensive tackle. I think he was there. I think he might have had a perfect 10, basically 100th percentile, either that or like 99th percentile um, overall athleticism at the position. Just a freak athlete, offensive tackle. He's age 22, so a, a year older. I don't think that would hold them back. It's a premium position. He hits all the athletic thresholds. Certainly somebody that's going to be in their purview for players that they're targeting early in the draft. How about Tevin Jenkins? He hits all the athletic thresholds. He's a premium position player, but he is 23. So that is one thing that's a couple of years older than they've generally been targeting. So that'll be a question is, will they target somebody with that age? We'll see. But that was the one red flag there. Alex Leatherwood, University of Alabama, offensive tackle, premium position, hits all the athletic thresholds, 22 years old. All right. Dylan Redunds, I think, is an interior offensive lineman, which would kind of eliminate him from this category. I also think 29 would be insanely rich for Dylan Redunds. He's also 23. So I'm going to eliminate him from this group. Walker Little is another interesting one, 22 years old, offensive tackle. Probably not in that first round range, but hits all the athletic profiles. Keep a real eye on him in the second round, or if Green Bay moves back in the first round or up in the second round. And then Liam Eichenberg hits all the athletic thresholds, offensive tackle, but also is 23 years of age. So they would have to decide on Jenkins and Eichenberg. They hit everything else, but are you willing to go a little bit overaged? At least it's not like they're 24, 25, right? But are you willing to go a little bit overaged at the position because it's a premium position, because they're maybe the best player available. Um, are they willing to overlook that a little bit? How about the defensive line? Levi Anwuzarike, he's 23. Also, they usually like defensive linemen a little bit bigger at the position. He's a little bit undersized for what Green Bay usually likes. So I'm going to eliminate him off that list as well. Christian Barmore, 21, defensive lineman, hits the overall RAS score or RAS score. However, brutal scores on the agility drills, which is something that Green Bay generally keeps a very close eye on at all positions. So because of that, because he was so poor, I'm actually going to eliminate Christian Barmore as well. Long story short, I don't think Green Bay goes defensive line in the first round. All right, how about edge rusher? Now, this is an interesting one because I, you know, they do have Rashawn Gary, Zadarius Smith, and Preston Smith, but in all likelihood, this is Preston Smith's last season. The rubber re meets the road on Zadarius Smith's contract next year, and they're either going to have to extend him or let him walk. And then you've got Rashawn Gary. Now, you've got a Jonathan Garvin who's a little bit younger, seventh round pick, but you're not making any draft decisions based on Jonathan Garvin. So it's within the realm of possibility. It's definitely the type of you know player that they would target. But I'm not sure they would actually go in this direction. But here are some names that could be in play here. Jason Owe, Owe from Penn State, 22 years old. Jalen Phillips from Miami, 21 years old. Carlos Basham, 23 years old. So a little bit uh, over age there. Joe Tryon, 21. And Aziz, Aziz Ojolari, 20 years old. So the two here, Jason Owa and Aziz Ojolari, are usually a little bit undersized for what they like. I think Phillips is probably gone. Basham and Tryon, really interesting. Basham is 23, Tryon 21. He kind of hits that sweet spot, right height, 
right, right speed, right size, right athleticism, 21 years old, premium position. I actually didn't have him on my initial list um, when I tweeted it out earlier this week, but he's definitely somebody that I think you'll have to keep an eye on for Green Bay at that edge rusher position. How about cornerback? Greg Newsom, age 20, hits the, the athletic thresholds, premium position, 20 years old. He's perfect. He was a little low on the short shuttle. Now, three cone, he met the, the, met the guidelines. Um, I think if you watch him on tape, you have zero concerns about his agility. So technically, I think his short shuttle would usually eliminate him from Green Bay. He hits everything else so perfectly. And if you watch him on tape, I think it erases any concerns that you have about the short shuttle. I would not hold that one athletic threshold against him. To me, this is a very top tier target for Green Bay. One name that's not getting near enough love or mock to Green Bay, even potentially in the late first, or I, I think more likely in the early second, if Green Bay were to move back, Paulson Adebo from the University of Stanford. He got absolutely brutalized by Gabe Davis at UCF in 2019. The rest of his tape is fantastic. He has all the athletic thresholds, only 21 years old. He hits the size. He hits everything that they look for. Keep a very close eye on Paulson Adebo from Stanford for Green Bay. Eric Stokes, corner from University of Georgia, didn't do the agility drills, so we don't know. 22 years old, but everything else he hits what Green Bay would like. A couple others that I think are off the list, Kelvin Joseph from Kentucky, nowhere near passing on the agility drills. Otherwise, he would have been on this list. 20 years old, University of Kentucky, premium position would have been on the list for sure, but I don't think Green Bay looks at him for those agility drills. Aaron Robinson, Kind of gets the double whammy here. Didn't pass the agility drills for what they normally like and is 23 years old. So I'm going to take him off the list at least early in that draft, at least from a first round perspective. All right. So that leaves us with you know a handful of players, a handful of edge rushers for sure. Jalen Phillips, Basham, Tryon, definitely in that list. Although Basham, again, overaged. Cosme, Jenkins, Leatherwood, Eichenberg, although Jenkins and Eichenberg a little bit overaged. Greg Newsom, Paulson Adebo, Eric Stokes. But let's say, you know, 13 of the last 16 years is great, but there've been three times where they haven't gone with either a quarterback, offensive tackle, defensive line, edge rusher, or cornerback. So it can happen. It's not like we can limit that possibility entirely. So let's take a look at some of the other positions. Wide receiver, two names that make a ton of sense here for Green Bay. They like those bigger physical wide receivers. Terrace Marshall from LSU, personally not a huge fan, but 20 years old, hits all the athletic you know thresholds, the size that they want. Not a premium position, but definitely a position that they could target early in the draft. Have to keep an eye on Terrace Marshall. Rashad Bateman, exact same thing. He did not do the agility testing, but 21 years old, wide receiver, all the athletic scores tested out good that he did do, meets that 8.0 or 80th percentile athlete threshold. So definitely keep an eye on Marshall and Bateman. Interior offensive line, if you're looking for one, Creed Humphrey, it seems insane to me that they would target an interior offensive lineman early that's so out of their realm. But listen, if they targeted, uh, what was it, like Elton Jenkins at like pick 45, somewhere in there, like if they targeted a Creed Humphrey at pick 29, 16 picks earlier, he was literally a 10.0, a hundredth percentile athletic score at the position. And this is a team that's basically looked to run it back from a season ago. Well, you replace Corey Lindsley with the most, most athletic and arguably best center in all of the draft with Creed Humphrey. That's just one more step towards running it back. I don't think they would go center, but you can't eliminate the possibility entirely. Zayvon Collins, I will believe that they take a linebacker in the first round when I see it. This has not been a position they prioritized. They have two young players at the position already. I do not think they'll go in this direction, but if they do, Zayvon Collins hits the threshold. They usually like those more physical linebackers who can be a little bit more punishing, still have the athleticism, take on blocks, be able to get off of them. Zayvon Collins hits all of that and he's only 21 years old. And then if you go defensive back, that's not corner, Trayvon Merrig, 21, hits the thresholds. And then Javon Holland, who couldn't play some corner as well, especially in the slot, um, have to keep an eye on him. He hits everything. He is only 21 as well. So the to, to recap the non, you know, top, or I guess uh, premium position players, Terrace Marshall, Rashad Bateman, Creed Humphrey, Zayvon Collins, Trayvon Morig, and Javon, uh, Javon Holland, excuse me. So 
If you want to narrow it down to the premium position, twenty around 21, 22 years of age um, and hitting all the athletic thresholds, you're probably looking at Sam Cosme, Alex Leatherwood, Jalen Phillips, Joe Tryon, Greg Newsom, Paulson Adebo, or Eric Stokes. That's probably your list. Now, if you advance that to maybe missing one thing, Carlos Basham, Tevin Jenkins, Liam Eichenberg, Jason Owa, Aziz Ojalari, Terrace Marshall, Bateman, Creed Humphrey, Zaven Collins, Traven Morig, or Javon Holland would be another one. I would be very, very surprised if it did not come from that list. Now, it's a very big list and it's one pick. I get that, but it gives you a better idea of what type of players and specifically who Green Bay is likely targeting early in the draft. And if I had to narrow it to three today, as we sit here right now, like I did a season ago and I narrowed it to uh, Ezra Cleveland, Austin Jackson, and Jordan Love, as we sit here today, I'm going Sam Cosme at offensive tackle, uh, University of Texas, Greg Newsom, Northwestern, if he can stay there. And then Tevin Jenkins. I know he's 23, but I know Green Bay also is going to very much value that offensive tackle position. I think he hits everything that they look for outside of that age. So I'm still going to leave him on the list. And again, if I have a sleeper here, Paulson Adebo is definitely a player that I have my eye on for hitting everything that Green Bay likes. Age, premium position, athletic profile, agility scores. He hits it to a T. He's probably more of a second round pick, but don't rule him out. Green Bay is not afraid to go outside of the norms for what they're selecting. And again, based off what they normally like, I have to think that they really like Paulson Adebo. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be right back here tomorrow as always. You can follow our audio podcast where we are about to hit episode 1000. And guess what? Jake Morley and Ross Uglum have a tremendous show lined up for you today, taking a deeper dive into that edge rusher position and the specific players that Green Bay will target. They have very similar to today's uh, discussion that we have. They have a very specific uh, guideline that they set up for edge rushers that they have followed almost to a T. So make sure you keep an eye out for the audio podcast today. Day as well. And then Tuesday is going to be our thousandth episode with Matt Bowen, myself, and Ben uh, Ben Fennel, excuse me. So make sure to check that out as well. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for listening. Until next time. And as always, go Pack Go.